friends, I'm Ronald with Coastline Robotics and today I'm here to introduce you the Banshee. Okay, I want to start um, by explaining a little bit what are the advantages of this frame. We spent around two months uh, designing and testing it just to make sure that everything was going to work and we're very happy with the final result. So first thing, um, it's a sandwich style frame. That means that everything inside of this frame is gonna be covered, it's gonna be protected. So there's less risk of uh, damaging any of your components. Second, uh, very interesting part is that um, I've seen other sandwich style frames that are very hard to remove the props. So that's why we have decided to leave uh, an extra space so you can actually uh, tuck in your finger and hold the motor while you remove the props. Third interesting thing about this frame is that the central pod is adjustable. So there are different flight controllers out there like the TBS power cube. So if you need more space, all you have to do is replace the standoffs. That way you can adjust the height. Uh, we provide this frame with two different standoffs. 15 and 20 millimeters. You can choose between these two. The HD camera can be easily mounted just with the Velcro. It's an X-shaped frame. The arms are exactly uh, 90 degrees uh, to each other. So we have a perfectly symmetric um, drone here. Also, the battery is gonna be positioned in the belly of the drone. So that give us a better balance of the center of gravity of the aircraft. Before we jump into the building process, let me show you the original design concept. Here I designed a case for the Mobius that will be offered in the future as an additional part. But for now, let's remove it. I'm going to delete the top plate so we can see how it looks inside. The skirt will keep the motor safe and add an extra of toughness once you place the two carbon fiber sheets together. The flight controller goes in the center of gravity of the frame for a better flying experience. Also, like I mentioned before, the camera pod height is adjustable. This frame was made for 5 inch props. Now let's take a look at the components. This uh, first motors, we're gonna use um, the Emax RS 2205 uh, 2300 KV motors. As a flight controller, I'm gonna be using an SP Racing F3 with Battleflight uh, flash on it. Power distribution board. The Matec power hub includes two regulated power outputs, one for 5 volts and another for 12 volts. It can work with up to 6S batteries. The little BESCs of 30 and 20 amps can be installed on this frame. In this build, I'll use the 20 amps uh, Pro. Now let's build this drone together. First step will be to take the bottom plate and install the PDB with the nylon standoffs provided. Attach the PDB with the standoffs with the M3 by 6mm screw. On the top part of the power distribution board, we will install two standoffs consecutively to rise the flight controller and create space for the ESC connectors and other wires. Place the ESCs and the rest of the components on the frame to take their respective measurements before you start cutting and soldering. This will also help to have a more organized build by knowing exactly where to place every component. Once you're satisfied, cover each ESC with heat shrink to avoid shorts with the carbon fiber. Remember that this is a conductive material. 
As you can see, when we place the 3D printed skirt on the frame, we have enough space to install a medium-sized ESC without any problem. Secure the ESCs with double-sided tape. Clear the power distribution board area. Measure and cut the wires. Make sure to cut at a precise length, not too long that will leave cable in the middle or too short that won't reach the powered output. Repeat the process with the rest of the ESCs. Install the motors using the M3 by 6mm screws. Make sure that the screws are not touching the copper inside the motors. This can cause overheating and eventually will burn the motor. If you see the screws are surpassing the metallic bottom of the motor, use a plastic washer or a shorter screw. Cut the motor wires to the appropriate length strip and solder to the ESCs. In this case, we won't be too concerned about soldering the wires in certain order. Remember, we can adjust the spinning direction later using the software. After soldering the motors, let's install the cable to supply five volts to the flight controller. Please double check the polarity and if it's possible, Test it with a multimeter. Now let's connect the FPV transmitter to the 12 volts output of the PDV. Again, double check the polarity before powering up the system. The SP Racing F3 can monitor your battery voltage and display it on your monitor or goggles if you have an OSD installed. To do this, we need to connect this small cable to the unfiltered power supply and again, triple check the polarity because your board can be fried in seconds if you make a mistake. Take a look at the flight controller and how I have installed the motor outputs. I use the side angle pins on the bottom of the board facing inside to create a smaller profile. Also, since we will have two standoffs in a row, this will make a perfect fit. Place the skirt. To install the battery cable, there are two options. One is through one of the holes on the back arms, and the second one, which is my favorite, is to the side. I initially was using the first option but then change my mind and put it on the side. Before continuing, check the voltage of every single power output on your system. Connect the ESCs and the 5 volt power supply. I'm triple checking the power output of this connector because I can easily make a mistake and burn my board. Fourteen point eight is a normal value since I'm using a four S battery. Before installing the flight controller, pass the FPV antenna extension below the power distribution board and secure the FPV transmitter.
then install the flight controller. Connect the battery monitor cable. The RC receiver I recommend is the Sky XSR, but in this occasion I only had a D4R available, so I decided to remove the pins and solder the PPM output directly to the receiver. To remove the pins, you must first cut all the black plastic into individual parts with an X-Acto knife. Then remove it and desolder the pins individually. This is an old technique and it's not very complicated to do, but still requires some skill. I will leave only the pins of channel 3 and 4 to keep the jumper that provides PPM output. Now, solder the RC connector to the receiver. With the XSR, you can avoid this step. Cover with heat shrink and place on the frame. Prepare the video transmitter to camera connector. Just make sure that you're putting them together properly and then you're gonna cover them with heat shrink and apply some heat on. Before placing the top plate, you'll have to install the aluminum standoffs. You have to choose between the 20 millimeters or the 15 millimeters. I'm using 20 millimeters in this build. So pass through all the cables carefully. You don't have to apply too much force. It will just go through easily and then install the screws. These are M3 by 20 millimeters screws. Then I'm using nylock to keep them in place. Now it's time to install the camera holder so I have previously put together the two plates using the M3 by 8 millimeter screws you should pre-assemble it this way and I'm gonna pass the cables I'm gonna install the antenna extension cable I'm gonna put it in place there's two holes so you can choose which side you want your antenna And then I'm just gonna tie with the M3 by 6 millimeter screws. Put everything in place, and now connect the video cable. Use the screws that come with the camera to install it. Last step will be to install the 
30 millimeter standoff. I'm gonna use zip ties to attach the RC receiver antennas so I don't chop them with my propellers. Install the antenna. We're almost done. I'm checking that everything is fitting properly, that I'm not doing anything wrong. Okay, the drum weighs 379 grams without batteries or props. But now I'm gonna install the LED light. to hold it in place. Now I'm gonna install the propellers. We're almost done. Make sure I'm gonna tie this properly. Well, let's go out and test it. Before I'm gonna place the HD camera, I'm just gonna use a Velcro strap this way. introduction of uh, our first frame the banshee please uh, like us on facebook follow us on twitter check out our instagram and don't forget to subscribe on our youtube channel thank you see you next time